Sometimes you say, okay, I think in this film maybe I achieve something. And then later on you realize, mm, no, that was not achieved. I really believe that the only reason you make a film is not for the result, but for what you learn for the next one. At least happens with me. I find that this is such an amazing learning experience that I hope it keeps on going until I, I cannot do films anymore. The world of cinema is so vast. That's part of the problem. I have a very eclectic taste as an audience, from highly entertaining, call it commercial films, to more obscure kind of works. And I want to learn from all kind of approaches to cinema. I'm Alfonso Cuaron, and these are my firsts. When I finally got my first Super 8, I mean Alta, the role was very expensive for me and my family. So I had to be very judicious. And my first role, I was just shooting tiny snippets of everything. And when I saw it, I realized, wow, this is a mess. And I realized that, you know, you need it. You need to allow some time. I would do my little stories and I would have my siblings or my cousins or friends acting. They would hate it. The catch is that because I couldn't afford the role, uh, most of the time the camera was empty and I was just framing and doing the scene. And I think that maybe those are lost masterpieces because uh, they were never shot. At that time, in Mexi Mexico City, I have to say I, I was very lucky because it was pretty much, I guess, that the golden time of cine clubs in Mexico City that also became the place where young people would go. It was the gathering place to, to figure out where the party was that night. I met Chivo among that crowd and end up being in same parties and we end up, you know, geeking about films. And then eventually uh, I started to go to film school. I was in the second year or third year where he entered his first year. We were already friends and I was at DP and he became my assistant. He was a collaborator, in, I have to say. But it was when I saw his, uh, that same year, his first Super 8 that he did for school, that I said, okay, he's a real DP. You know, it, it was incredible to see how from his first Super 8, Chivo was already Chivo. Ever since I remember, I wanted to be a director. It was very obscure what a director was for me. As a kid watching cinema, I didn't differentiate between what is a director, I didn't know what he did, the actor, the story, or the photography, everything was a merge. It was not until I saw Two Making Offs, one of early Sergio Leone film, and Butch Cassie and Sundance Kid, I realized that there was a guy who was a director, making decisions and also making the decisions with the cinematographer or the camera, and how the flow uh, of images were going to be. I definitely said, oh, I want to be that. But I never divorced that from, from photography. It was, for me, it was kind of one and the same thing. But when I started collaborating with Chivo, we add to each other. I have a view about what he's doing as a cinematographer as much as he has uh, of, to what I'm doing as a director. It's like a very telepathic communi communication. My first job in the U.S., it was a short film, part of an uh, episodic anthology that Sidney Pollack and Steve Gollin produced. And I have to say, the first day I was absolutely terrified. The other people working on the same project was S Steve Soderbergh, Jonas Jonathan Kaplan, Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks. And I was the unknown, and my first day I went behind schedule like crazy. And my actors were Alan Rickman, Laura Dern, and Diane Lane. And I was terrified of them. I didn't know what to tell them. And at the beginning of the second day, Alan and Laura called me and said, we want to talk to you. And I thought, okay, this is the moment in which they fire you. So they take me to this room in, the, in this location. And they said, we're here for you. 
We want to see your vision. Just tell us what you need. We're going to support you. We're here for you. And that was the burst of, of confidence, the confidence I needed. And I became very fr good friends of Laura and, and Alan. And I always been grateful with them because that was a point in which I could have been broken and, and, and probably my life would have been completely different. Sometimes it's not about who gives you the job, but who supports you and who gives you the confidence to keep on moving. I don't think there's a, any filmmaker that after seeing any film with Kate for the first time, didn't want to work with her. The first one I saw with Kate was probably Elizabeth, and I went to the premiere in New York, and I was like, wow, what is that? This is an incredible actor. And then my friend Alejandro González Iñárritu took work with Kate in Babel. And then Guillermo del Toro worked with her in, in um, Nightmare Alley. And it was like, okay, I'm, I'm missing. <laughs> you know, I, I always wanted to collaborate with her. You know, I was very lucky that that disclaimer gave me that opportunity. From the moment I read the book for the first time, I, as I was reading and saying, oh my God, there's, there's a film here. In that film, I always envisioned Kate. Rene Knight sent me the manuscript. I didn't know how to turn it into a film. And it was not until years later in which I thought, okay, this could be done as a, as a long film, you know, because it was so layered and you follow so many characters that you have to follow them with detail. And Rene uh, called me to say that the, the, the rights were available. So I, uh, I jumped into it immediately.